As part of verification, let's check how the results depend on the mesh. So before that, let me, you know, if I go to total deformation, now it turns out it's actually better to check the directional deformation rather than total deformation. Um, so I can go in here and um, change this to, in fact, I can duplicate this. Let's say duplicate without results and change it to directional deformation. Okay, and I want it in Y. Um, I've seen students get, you know, think that they're getting the wrong results because um, then they're going to the homework because they're looking at total deformation. And so it's it's good to, you know, really know which um, deflection, which uh, displacement uh, component you're looking at. And I'll say evaluate all results. Okay, and um, so the maximum is around five point. 133 millimeters so change the units to millimeters okay so the maximum is 5.133 now let me change the mesh and so i'll go to mesh edge sizing usually you increase the number of elements here i'm going to decrease it um, so i will decrease that to one and i'll explain in a second uh, you know why that is the case uh, very soon, I'll explain that. Okay, and I'll say update the mesh. Okay, and now I have two nodes and one element, so I can go and check that. So this is, should be two nodes, and, and that's one element. And then I want answers to redo the numerical solution and the post-processing on this new mesh for the same mathematical model, so I'll click Solve. I'm getting the same warning, which I know is not a problem here, so I'll just get rid of that. Um, you know, I can get it back over here, or I can dismiss it. Um, okay, so let me go back to the um, the directional deformation two. Okay, it didn't change. <laughs> and uh, so it turns out that you know this is um, a, a special case um, because ANSYS is assuming that you have a third order polynomial interpolation within the element that the displacement varies as a you know as x cubed um, and third order polynomial with the highest term being of the order x cubed. The exact solution is also a third order polynomial. So when ANSYS tries to fit a polynomial, it has uh, the, the form of the, you know, the order of the polynomial is right, and it'll fit it exactly. So again, this is a quirk of the, um, of this particular problem. It's a very quirky problem, but you can actually get a lot out of it uh, if you do it carefully. Um, so, which is why you can go to one element and you can also check that the stresses haven't changed and so on. Um, so our results don't depend on the mesh and you will see that the hand calculation is you know is actually turns out to be the exact solution here to the mathematical model the hand calculation and that's a little bit different from ANSYS okay so ANSYS and the hand calculation should match exactly because both are really giving you the exact solution for the simple problem it's a little bit different and I think very very slightly for the displacement and I think that very minor difference comes because ANSYS is using the Timoshenko beam theory and the hand calculation is using the Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Um, so that's uh, what I have for, for mesh refinement. Oh, by the way, I should also mention that the other thing you can do is go to higher order polynomial, right? If you, um, from the discussion on the big ideas in finite element analysis, but you already have a third order polynomial. So that's a, you know, that's, uh, a high order polynomial so you won't go any higher than that so the only thing you need to do is for this particular case is just you you know vary the number of uh, nodes and elements and check how your results change